All right. Uh, hello. <laughs> Let's get started. Uh, uh, this is uh, Sergey Martin from uh, Movies. Movies was a big support for this symposium. Guys, uh, we need to go and check out all the stands when, when they're down there in the atrium, guys. Please support it. Uh, movies uh, are doing a lot of great things in the world of language education. And I'm really excited to have them here uh, at the symposium. Um, next stop, uh, Martina Limberg will introduce Sergey Martin. Thank you, Eric. Hello. I'm Martina Limberg of Movies, and um, it's a great pleasure to introduce Sergey, Sergey Martin. Uh, he's a language teacher who some years ago started a YouTube channel. Now he's a YouTuber who teaches Spanish a lot. And he inspires me. And today he will talk about getting inspired, about creativity and about YouTube. And uh, so get inspired. Thank you. Thanks. OK, thank you for coming. Okay, yeah. All right, before we start, I would like you to think about uh, food. Yeah, it's good that we, have, we had lunch right now. But I don't want you to think about some uh, normal food. I would like you to think of uh, that's, that food that you are already uh, salivating for. That special food that maybe you would like to share with that uh, special person. Maybe, maybe uh, in that special place, uh, it could be a restaurant, maybe in front of a chimney, just think about that food, maybe that food for that special occasion. Just think a little bit about that food. Which food are you thinking about? You can comment with the person you have uh, next to you if you want to see if you have something in, in common, if you were thinking about something in common. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure none of you were thinking about a salad. Am I right? And I'm 100% sure that none of you were thinking about a lettuce. Yeah? Okay. We, all of us, uh, eat salad. And we put lettuce in that salad. But we don't eat the salad to taste the flavor of the, of the lettuce. We eat salad because uh, we have to taste the dressing or maybe the nuts we put on top of it or maybe that caramelized onion. When I'm, uh, when I'm thinking about, uh, about a class, I like to think uh, about it uh, as a salad because the salad must have content. It must have uh, lettuce. Same as the lesson. The lesson must have content. But it also must have something that awakes our senses. Some moment that gets inspiration, that get inspiration, or some moments that our students want to learn it, want to know what's going to happen, and then they will remember it. Our students will remember that moment that are our uh, melted goat cheese, or maybe the blueberries or the pistachios we are putting in the salad. They are not going to remember the lettuce, probably. Uh, today, I would like to share my recipe of my salad, of my class, with a special touch. I am Sergi Martin. And my channel, my YouTube channel, is uh, Sergi Martin Spanish. Sergi is my name. Martin is my, uh, is my surname. And Spanish stands for, one, my job. I'm a Spanish teacher. 
Two, my nationality, I am Spanish. And three, my language, I'm a native Spanish speaker. So it means that English is not my mother tongue. So ex please excuse me if I make some mistakes, but uh, I I'm doing my best and I, I think, uh, I know I'm sure it's the message that counts. So I'm sorry. Okay, let's talk about a little, a little bit about uh, second language acquisition theory plus YouTube. Here, I leave you some seconds to read all these interesting points. Maybe some of you, all of you, already know some of these points, you thought about them. But I would like to emphasize, emphasize some of them. Uh, when we are using uh, YouTube uh, in, the, in the class, uh, it's, uh, one of the good points is that uh, YouTube offers us authentic content, always with context. Context, context, context. How many times we heard that with context, students learn more. Without context, there is no, nothing deep in there, so we need that context. Uh, also, with uh, a good YouTube lesson, students can learn at home. They can be more autonomous. And uh, it has great power of attraction for the net generation. That uh, generation that don't know life, that, that doesn't know life without the internet. So that generation is always consuming uh, maybe YouTube or at least multimedia content. We are going at this point, we're going to, to call to, to my friend. I have a friend called uh, Carlos Dickens. He's, uh, he's Spanish and he's a specialist in uh, statistics applied to teaching. So I'm going now to, to call him to, to make a, a video conference with him. So he's going to explain us some uh, YouTube statistics that I think are quite interesting. I hope the connection is good enough to make here a video call. Hi, Sergi. How are you? Hi to everybody in Berno. Hi, Carlos. I don't want to waste your precious time, so if you could comment on the interesting facts, please. Okay, let's look at uh, those facts. <clears throat> Every minute, 400 hours of video are uploaded to YouTube. In total, people watch more than 1 billion hours of YouTube videos a day more than Netflix and Facebook video combined. Mm. To watch all the content that is uploaded to YouTube in just one day, we would need to spend more than 65 years watching YouTube 24 seven. Imagine sitting on your sofa for 65 years, you would watch only what has been uploaded today. Amazing. Eight out of 10 people aged 18 to 49 watch YouTube. And in 2015, TV viewing time decreased by 4% in that age range, while YouTube went up 74%. Uh -huh. The growth of YouTube is still very big. Y yeah, yes, I see. Could you tell us why YouTube is so mm -hmm. successful, please? There are several factors that make YouTube so successful. For example, it allows online interaction between the creator and the community. It is easily accessible as it is free. The videos are short in general and tell personal stories. You and I can create a video on YouTube. We can tell our story. Yes. The production is spontaneous which makes it natural, unlike the written text, in which everything is static. And finally, there are many different kinds of videos, that is, 
There are videos for all people and for all uses. Uh -huh. And why should we introduce YouTube in the class? Well, YouTube is relatively new, especially in teaching, but its success and potential offers new possibilities hmm. since the students can interact not only with the community, other students, but also with the teacher through the comments. As um, Richard A. Mayer proves in his book Multimedia Learning, people learn more deeply from words and images than from words alone. Well, YouTube provi provides that, the combination of sound and moving images, but also graphics, music, sound effects and text on the screen. Mm. It also offers authentic context, which allows our students to develop various skills, not only listening, but also critical thinking, understanding various accents and so on. Finally, there are many types of spoken text that cover all fields of knowledge. If we say that all the information can be found on Google, we can also say that all that information is also on YouTube in the form of a video. Very well, Carlos. Thank you for your time and greetings from Brno. My pleasure. Ahoy! Bye. Okay. We go back. Which one do you think was the most watched video in the world uh, in 2017? What do you think? Despacito? Yeah, that's right. In the world, Despacito by Luis Fonsi and Daddy Yankee. And in the USA, in 2017, any idea? Despacito by Luis Fonsi and Daddy Yankee. And in Spain? Despacito, by Luis Fonsi and Daddy Yankee. And in the Czech Republic? The parody of Despacito by Kobe. Yeah. That was the most watched video in, uh, in 2017. Do you know it? Do you know that video? Or do you know Kobe? Yes, no, yes, no. Sedí mi to, despacito, que va para nas na pince y burrito, y ver mi solina está lenta quietito, y si spiva chmanelski, ale ne ide mi to. Prosím už ne, když jsem to slyšel poprvé, říkal jsem si stačí, teď už jsem to slyšel stokrát, prosím ne, už fakt nechci. Ok, actually, uh, I, I don't like that song, <laughs> but Spanish power. Ok. Uh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, if we think about uh, Kobe, a little bit about Kobe, he's a Czech YouTuber doing videos in Czech, uh, maybe aimed to, to uh, Czech viewers. And it's interesting that Czech Republic has about 11, millions, 11 million inhabitants, and uh, just this video got almost 11 million views in a channel aimed for just the Czech Republic. So we can say that maybe everybody in the Czech Republic has seen this video. So it's quite a good success. So when I, when I thought about uh, all this Despacito hype, I said, okay, why not creating my Despacito? <laughs> and I did it. I created my Despacito, my version.
Y si aprendéis esto, todo esto, vais a usar bien el subjuntivo. Sí, sabes que ya llevo tiempo estudiándolo. Tengo que aprender subjuntivo hoy. He aprendido a usarlo bien. Muéstrame su uso, por favor. Tú, tú eres la gramática que yo no sé. Lo voy estudiando, pero yo no sé. No puedo aprenderlo, no tiene sentido. Ya, ya no entiendo nada, hoy estoy fatal. Todos los alumnos estamos igual. Esto hay que estudiarlo sin ningún apuro. Subjuntivo Quiero que aprendas esto despacito Deja que te diga cosas al oído Para que te acuerdes si no estás conmigo Subjuntivo Me gusta que estudias esto despacito Dile a tu profe que te lo repita No creo que digas no lo necesito Ok, thank you. When, when I decided to, to do this uh, video, I don't know absolutely anything about singing, anything about dancing, you can say it, and uh, nothing about music, and I hate this song. But I have a friend who, had, who has a, a studio, a recording uh, music studio in Valencia, in Spain, and I asked her, his, uh, him, uh, his Moncho, his name, Moncho, please, I want to record a, a song, a parody of a song, and he said, please, tell me it's not Despacito. And it was despacito, so <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes, uh, that's, it. that's it. Okay. Uh, subjuntivo is uh, some, yeah, in short, some Spanish grammar that uh, makes uh, lots of troubles to, to Spanish students. So I created uh, the lyrics of this song, who are full of uh, subjunctive, uh, or however it's called in, in English, and it has lots of examples and explanations. And uh, Kobe's parody inspired me to do this video. Yeah? Of course, it's not as successful as Kobe's parody because my channel is not a channel of viral videos, even though I have some that got some kind of viral. But, okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Anyway. Enough, please. Then I am all day uh, with this song in my head. Ah, I can't find the mouse. Okay. Okay, here it is. Good. So that was my despacito. To know about the success of, uh, of my videos or other stuff I, I, I do online, uh, I, can, I can ask my students or to know the reaction of my students. But there is another way uh, that I have to, to know if, it, if people like it or not. And it is through the comments uh, on, uh, on YouTube and also on Facebook, where I share my videos regularly. So I will just comment three of them. There are many. But uh, the first one you see here is from Facebook. Uh, it's a, a Spanish teacher who says that she loves my channel, also her students. And I ask her uh, what they do, where she teaches and what they do with my videos, because it's very interesting what other teachers do with my videos. So I can adapt them better. And she says that she's a teacher in Italy, and uh, they, it, my videos are good to introduce uh, some subject, and then they, uh, and also they work very well as icebreakers, and uh, that students ask for for my videos because they, they like them. I don't know why. Uh, and then, the the second one up there, uh, it's very it's very funny because uh, she's a student, a teacher from uh, a Spanish teacher uh, teaching in France, and she said that. Uh, she played the video to, to, their student, to her students, and uh, all of them were dancing, singing uh, that my song uh, in the corridors of, of the school. Yeah. And the last one, 
uh, is uh, another follower who uh, tells me that I'm crazy and uh, she is writing uh, gratitude phrases, all of them using the subjunctive. So it's, it's very nice. So for me, it's, it's really nice reading all these uh, comments. Good. Sure, you've heard about digital immigrants or native immigrants. I'm pretty sure you, you have heard uh, sometimes uh, about that. But I prefer one term that Douglas Raskhoff coined in the 90s, screenagers. They were uh, 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 some people, some uh, yeah, teenagers, that for the first time they grew up with the, with the idea that screens are not something to, to watch passively, but rather they are something that can be manipulated. So these screenagers can project their identities uh, to these screens. Those first screenagers, that uh, generation, that were teenagers in the late 90s or the beginning of, the, of this century, they are now uh, maybe starting their working careers or finishing their studies. Those people are more and more our students. Maybe they are more and more our students. And they are, uh, they are our target. It's good to know how they think and what they like. Let's imagine you want to buy a t-shirt. So you go to a shop and you see uh, a model, you see a t-shirt uh, that it's uh, acceptable, you, you like it, yeah? and it has an acceptable price. But you decide to go to another shop because yeah, you want to see other options. You go to another shop, uh, and then you see a t-shirt that you fall in love with that t-shirt. Yeah? And you discover that it costs half the price. So what do you do? You buy the t-shirt. It's obvious. Yeah? Okay. Something like that. Okay. Uh, that shop, that second shop, uh, got a sale. But it's also true that the first shop lost a sale. So something like that happens when, uh, in class when the attention of our students moves to something more interesting. Is it, is it because our offer is not attractive enough? Or maybe is it because uh, what catches the students' attra attention is more attractive? I don't know. I don't know exactly which one is the, is the reason, but I think it's crucial that our students can't lose uh, the attraction of our, of our lesson. So it's the same as the shop that lost a customer. We can't lose a, a sale because it's bad business. But then, what kind of content engages students? Just think a little bit about that. What is the content that engages our students? I have it clear. Content they like. If they like it, they're going to, to pay attention. If they don't like it, they're going to lose attention. That's normal. Yeah, it happens to me. To talk about creative content, we're going to call to uh, another friend. He's call, his, his name is uh, Oscar Rowling. He's a famous storyteller work, work, uh, uh, with lots of experience on TV. So let's go to him. Hi, Sergi Martin. How are you? Hi to everybody in Brno. Hello, Oscar. Uh, we were talking about uh, creating engaging teaching content. What do you have to tell us about that? Well. Of course, every teacher knows his students well enough to decide what content they do and they don't like. Of course, in each class there are different kinds of people with different tastes. But if you look at the statistics, we can be pretty sure that most people like multimedia content. Most people like YouTube. Mm. One of the reasons why people like YouTube Besides its incredibly rich content, is that it allows us to think of images on screens not only as things to manipulate, 
but as something in, we, in which we see ourselves reflected. Hmm. For us, digital immigrants, people who weren't born with a smartphone in their hand, television was something for the elites. Surely, for many of you, when you were younger, appearing on television was a dream within the reach of very few. Now, all that has changed. Uh, we live surrounded by cameras. We all have uh, one in our pocket, in our phone. And also, those cameras are connected to the world. They are connected to the internet. The screens have evolved from being something reserved to feel to something where we can project our identities. Mm. And not all the people who do it are professional or acclaimed broadcasters. Perfect, Oscar. As always, your experience is inspiring. Thank you. I'm happy to participate. Ahoy! Bye! Good. I'm going to do something that I have done only once, only once, with a group of four people. They were four students that wanted, wanted to, to watch my first video on YouTube, yeah? So, before, before I show my first video, I want to tell that uh, that video is not visible now in, uh, in my channel. I created it six years ago, and uh, what I wanted to do when I did that first video, when I started creating my, my YouTube channel, uh, or, or rather what I didn't want to do was to do videos where I am standing and there is a, a board full of words and I'm just reading the words that are there written. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to do more dynamic videos, going to the street and, and making them more, more attractive. And I did this. Bienvenido a Español con Ok Spanish. Soy Sergio Martí y quiero presentarte mi curso de español que empieza con este primer vídeo. Aprender español no es fácil, pero afortunadamente tenemos a nuestra disposición una serie de herramientas. I think, I think that's enough. Please. Pane Boje, what, what was I thinking about? Escuchar I don't know. I don't know. Uh, in that video, there is nothing good. The quality of the image is horrible. The, the sound is bah, awful. Uh, the way of talking is extremely boring. And my posture and lack of movement, I don't seem absolutely natural at all. Uh, so it's, I was thinking what was wrong with that video, and it's, it's not anything specific, but rather is that there is nothing good in that video, nothing. But that's not the worst. The worst is the message, because it's a presentation video. So my first video was a presentation video. I wanted to introduce my channel. I will explain why this is so bad. A couple of years ago, I got a, a mail from a subscriber who, who said that she wanted to create a, a YouTube channel. And uh, she said, yes, I am a Spanish teacher as you are. I want to create a, a YouTube channel similar as, as yours. So please help me. Uh, and I want to do a presentation video. And I said, oof, presentation. OK. Um, I wanted to be like quite polite, and I say, mm, maybe you could try to do something different and uh, just do a lesson. So I said, no, make a lesson. And she said, oh, Sergi, come on. Uh, I have to introduce myself to my audience. It's obvious, no? It's, I mean, it's very normal. First thing, introduction. Wait, what audience? I mean, that YouTube channel doesn't exist. So she's introducing herself to an audience that doesn't exist. 
So it's what I did. My first video was an introduction for nobody, because there was nobody. So, but she did it. She did that video. I think it's the only video she did. Yeah? Uh, it got <laughs> almost zero views. Nobody watched uh, that video except her mom and a couple of very faithful friends. And it's, uh, it's normal. And uh, the only thing that video did uh, was that uh, it discouraged her. So it was the last video she did. Because when, uh, when you create something with a lot of interest and, uh, and you put all your passion and intention in it and nobody cares, it's very sad. Very, very sad. But because what do, we look when, what, we, what do we look for when we look for content? What are we looking for when we want some content? It's obvious. Content. Yeah, I mean, we're looking for a, for a lesson, no? We don't, we don't look for promises. We don't look for something that doesn't exist. As uh, in my next video, I'm going to, to say, in my channel, I will publish videos that blah, blah, blah. I'm going to tell you, no. I mean, my, my um, recommendation is, do you have anything to say? Just say it. That's it. Bluntly. But that, that uh, first video helped me realize uh, what I don't want to do. And I always say that I learn more when somebody uh, tells me, uh, Sergi, this video could be improved doing this, this, and this. Or maybe you could have changed this, or you couldn't do a next video like that. If uh, somebody pats my back and says, ah, oh, that's great. The only thing that will improve is my ego, but not my next video. Yeah? Because I'm happy with what I have done. Experts in marketing say, if you have created your first product and you are not ashamed of it, it means that you created it too late. You understand? So, yeah. Create. Do something. Sometimes it happens to me that I don't have enough time in class to, to explain uh, something, uh, uh, a subject, for example, uh, a verbal tense or whatever. Uh, it can be a good class, but not all students learn 100%. And what, uh, what is most important is that not all of them learn at the same pace. Fortunately, uh, well, if you can't clarify the lesson, the building you are constructing doesn't have stable foundations. So, fortunately, nowadays we have enough technology to fill that percentage of information that is missing from, uh, from the explanation. Because, because if students have the explanation online, they can learn and practice at home at their own pace. They can be autonomous students. And that explanation will be always there in their computer, in their laptop, or in their uh, phone. They can watch it now and again and again. So you can give them a good explanation in class. Or maybe you can look for that explanation maybe on YouTube. Or maybe you can create it. Why not? And then you can give maybe that explanation as homework. Let's have a look at some, uh, one example. There is a book, a Spanish textbook, called Aventura Dos. And uh, there, is, there are a couple of pages related to booking uh, a hotel room. So in this exercise, that's an audio. And there is this uh, form they have to, to fill in according to an, uh, to an audio. It's a phone call. Uh, where somebody reserves, ma makes a booking of a, of a room. It's a phone call. When was the last time you booked a room by phone in a foreign language? I don't remember. I even don't remember booking a, a room by phone. I'm sorry. Maybe in person. Yeah. But when I ask this question to my students, they say Airbnb, booking.com. Maybe if they are backpackers, they go to the reception and, and they have to 
speak to the Cambodian lady who is at the reception of the hotel, maybe, maybe, or the guest house, but by phone. So, uh, what I did is that uh, on one weekend I went to, to the west of the Czech Republic with my wife, my wife is Czech, and I went to a holiday and I took advantage of that moment. I was in a hotel on holidays and say, why not record a video? I had in mind this exercise. I had some PDFs and so on. And I said, okay, I used that audio to make a video. And that's what I did when I took advantage of a good moment. Sorry, but the internet connection is... Okay. Voy a reservar un par de habitaciones en este hotel. Vas a aprender unas frases muy útiles y además vas a tener la oportunidad de hacer un ejercicio okay, y enviármelo I'm going to por mail. Go a little bit forward because te voy a explicar el ejercicio. There is the form. Así que... Again, this Hola, green stuff, Sergio I don't know Martín. why. That's me. That's my wife playing the receptionist. And that's what they do. Uh, more or less in the middle of the of the video, I'm explaining, I have some explanation about what is the, the grammar, what is the vocabulary I used, and all, everything I used can be used uh, by phone, can be used in person, can be used also in online registration, so people can learn. And it, I think it's more visual than just an audio. I... In, uh, in, that, uh, in that book, that uh, Aventura Dos book, that is not a bad, uh, it's not a bad textbook. Okay. It's quite good, actually. But they also have uh, some two prepositions that cause lots of trouble to Spanish-speaking uh, uh, Spanish students. They are uh, por or para. So another weekend, I went to a castle and I took advantage of that moment and I did an explanation of uh, these two prepositions. And again, more visual. So how can I use that, uh, that uh, lesson? I can use it during the lesson or I can not use it during the lesson and give them as homework or just something to, to watch again and again. If you do it in a funny, engaging way, they are going to watch it, probably. And uh, it's more, even more engaging when they know the person who is appearing on the video. So they trust your, they trust their teacher. They trust your students trust you. It's normal. Yeah. So they say, "Ooh, that's my teacher." Yuppie. Mm -hmm. I like to think of a YouTube lesson as a story. In its purest sense. A story is an anecdote. An anecdote is a sequence of actions. One action leads to the next. Uh, so this happens, and then happens this other thing, and then this, that leads to the other thing, and then uh, what's going to happen, and what could have happened, and something is happening. We are creating expectation. I want to tell you what happened to me a couple of days ago. A couple of days ago, I was sitting on my terrace, and I decided to go to the toilet. I went to the toilet, and I went to the living room. I took the remote of the TV. I was looking at the remote, and I left again the remote on the table. I didn't turn the TV on. I start at the door of the entrance of my apartment. I went slowly towards the door of my apartment. I grabbed the handle of the door, but I didn't open it. I turned back, I went again to the living room, I sat again on the sofa, and I turned the TV on. Normal story. Nothing happened there. <laughs> right? Nothing happened there. 
I'm pretty sure that you already have in your mind some ways of exploiting that story yeah, in the class. What is happening? What could have happened? I'm not an English teacher. so yeah. uh, What is going to happen? What would you do? Why this guy is doing this? How is the weather? Uh, who is, wh what are, is he watching on the TV? Yeah? So there are many ways, because even the simplest story can create attraction and can be used in the classroom. You can create a very simple story. This story took me like 10 minutes to do, and it's not a video. It's just images, some photos. Yeah? And even your students can create a story. It doesn't matter how simple it is. But I want to show you what I think is an engaging story. We uh, creators, YouTube, uh, YouTubers, we have the, the option to highlight a video uh, in, the, in the front page of our, of our channel. So usually, I'm sure that uh, sometimes you open the YouTube channel and uh, automatically a video pops up and it plays. Yeah? It happens because you are not a subscriber. Because that is the trailer of the video. So the aim of that video is to catch uh, more subscribers. So it's a, like a, it's a trailer. Just, it's like an advertisement of, uh, of the channel. And this is my trailer. Come on. Oh, sorry, slow, connection slow. Okay. I'm sorry, but it's just thinking because of the connection. Sorry. It doesn't want to play, I'm sorry. Imagina que cada mañana, Imagina okay. que que cada mañana 440 euros. Ok, let's see if now works. No. Imagina. Ok. que cada mañana encuentras 1.440 euros sin hacer nada para ganarlos puedes regalarlos gastarlos hacer figuras de papel o quemarlos pero los que no uses al final del día desaparecerán What would you do with 1,440 euros a day? You have to use them. Think a little bit. What would you do every single day? If you don't use them, they will disappear. Any idea? Invest. OK. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Give. Uh-huh. Good. That's good. Yeah. Do you want to know why I, I chose uh, that number? You want to know why I chose that uh, 1,440? Okay. If it wants to go. Sorry. I can't do anything now. <laughs> hmm. Okay, I will tell you, I will tell you. 
what happens there because it's not working. So what that video says, more or less, is Oh, here it is. Okay, what that video said is uh, that that's how life works. Uh, the difference is that what you get every day is not 1,440 euros. What you get every day is 1,440 minutes. So think well what you are going to do with that time because 1,440 minutes is 24 hours and you get it always. If you don't use it, they will disappear. That's true. That is my, my YouTube tra my trailer. And it was a creative moment. I want, to, I want to give you five tips to foster your creativity. Number one, share your ideas. Maybe you think that if you have an idea uh, and you share it, somebody will, will uh, copy that idea and it's not good, so I don't want to share with anybody. But don't worry. Uh, they can give you new points of view. They can give you feedback, and your idea could improve. And there is another thing. If they copy you, they are the copy. You are the original. One more thing. If they, uh, if they copy you, it means that you are good. If they don't copy you, maybe. That's a problem. Anyway, ask yourself the right questions. Creative people are always analyzing why things are as they are, how things uh, are created, why people created this and this. Write your ideas. I have my phone, my telephone, full of, uh, of notes, uh, of ideas to, to do new videos because uh, sometimes I'm not at the right place when I get inspiration. As Picasso said, Inspiration exists, but it has to find us working. So it's good to write always your ideas. Surround yourself with creative people. Friends, workshops, uh, look for uh, people who create similar content as the one you want to create. And then follow your role models. Don't miss any news from people you think are creative. Uh, you will see how they evolve and you will evolve with them. That video we saw uh, was a huge creative, uh, a creativity process. First, I wrote, okay, first I had this idea and uh, I used it before doing the video, I used it many times in my, in my classes, so I knew that that idea uh, works quite well. And then uh, I wrote a, a script of the Spanish mm, video, yeah, I, I wrote the, the script, and then uh, I went to my mother-in-law's house and I recorded it with my wife, and to give it a more hummy, hummy uh, touch, I put my, okay, my, wad, my wife's grandma's robe, pink robe, so I think it's quite funny. And uh, the money you see there is not 360 euros, it, it, sorry, it's not uh, 1,000 euros, it's 360 euros. And I convinced my wife and my mother-in-law to appear in, uh, in the video. And then my mother-in-law has millions of objects at home, so it was very easy to pick maybe that violin. Uh, and in the end, okay, I learned how to do origami watching YouTube uh, tutorials. And uh, in the end, I had to burn all the money because it takes a lot of, uh, of uh, like, uh, shots to, to do a, a good video. So I was burning the money and that video cost me 360 euros. <laughs> no, I was, I was burning uh, magazine clippings. No, but you don't know this is. No, I didn't burn any. any no, no, no. <laughs> I didn't do it. Anyway, but what if you don't have inspiration? What happens? So it can happen that you say, oh, I'm not a creative person. What can I do? My recommendation, and it's not original mine, so I've heard it many times, is copy. Why not? As Jaime Altozano says, he's a Spanish uh, YouTuber who analyzes uh, music video. He says that 
uh, there are more and more complaints of plagiarism in music. And partly, it is because there is a lot of music created in the world. So it's very difficult to create some chorus or some uh, chords or melody that wasn't created before. It's very hard. So when you are creating a new explanation, don't you think it maybe has been explained before, same way? So, yeah. Copy, but do it well. Look for your style. If you don't have a style, invent one. Yeah? By making more and more creations, you will find that style. And work, work, and work. And always, again, always, I repeat, always quote your sources. At least it's fair. As uh, a friend of mine said once, that is one sentence that I like to, to write in, in my notebook. Actually, she doesn't know, but when she said that sentence, I was recording the, the interview we had in my phone. Maybe it's not fair, but I did it. That's true. She, she, know. she, she knows it now. OK, uh, let's go to the technical stuff. Something very important, very important. Hold, record, if you are recording with your mobile phone, record always in horizontal, always in horizontal. If you record in vertical, you are missing, in the majority of screens, you are missing a 60% of the, of the screen. Yeah, so. Uh, another thing is hold the phone and don't move it too much. A uh, recommendation to holding the, whole, the phone is like this. If you hold the phone like this, it will be more shaky. If you hold the phone like this, it's more stable. And don't move it too much. When you are moving a lot and we don't want to follow the, the images, no, stop it and go away. Yeah? Because it disturbs a lot. Consider using a microphone. Sometimes I have videos where I'm on the street and there is a lot of noise and my wife is recording with, with my mobile phone and I have her mobile phone using it as a recorder. So I am talking to, to her mobile phone. I'm recording the sound. And then editing, uh, I can cut, the, I can cut the, the parts of the video and adding the, the image and the sound as two separated files. And in the end, the, quality is, the sound of the quality is good because it's very important when you are teaching that the sound is very good. Uh, use the best camera if you have it. I have many videos recorded with my phone. And I don't have an iPhone X or something like that. This is a regular, normal phone. Yeah, it's a, yeah. Uh, if you can invest in a better camera, just have a look. There are millions of kinds and so on. I like this one because uh, it can, to record myself, I can do this and I can see myself on the screen. I can see if I am in the screen or where I am. These cameras uh, have also, these new cameras have also very fast uh, focusing. So it's, I'm always, I, I'm never blurred, almost never blurred. But they can be very expensive. So with a mobile phone, regular mobile phone, the one you have, it's okay. Because the most important is the message, not the image. Uh, watch tutorials to learn. Uh, watch tutorials to learn how to record, how to get inspiration, everything. There are millions of tutorial, tutorials of everything on YouTube. And begin with simplicity. I once started looking for how to improve my, my image, and then the illumination, and then the sound, and then the software. Yeah? So slowly, slowly. Don't go to the first, to, to the best uh, of the equipment. And conclusion. I was thinking about a conclusion, but why? I have said it, everything. So I don't need any conclusion. But I would like to highlight something that uh, we teachers must be innovative. We must evolve because it's a natural process in nature. And uh, when we start creating something new, we can't foresee the, we can't foresee the final result. 
You know, when engineers designed the old heavy diving suits with this scaphandra or whatever it's called in English and this heavy uh, boots, they, when they designed that heavy diving suit, they didn't know it would inspire the, the space suits. So, thank you.